Welcome to Gardening Through the Seasons. I'm Jim Dell Prince, Professor of Floral Design at Mississippi State University. Today we're going to talk about the world of bromeliads, one of the best houseplants you can find. There's good reason for that, and I'd like to start off by introducing you to a very good friend that you're going to see quite a bit if you've not met him already. This is the Gusmania lingulata, otherwise known by the larger name of a bromeliad. The Guzmania is a great plant because it has colorful bracts and durable foliage. It's one of the most popular house plants around now, and there's very good reason why you see it in so many homes and businesses. Let's take a closer look. Bromeliads are native to the American continents and are found in forms as humble as Spanish moss to majestic forms such as Ichmia fasciata, the silver vase plant. If you've not tried many bromeliads, you will enjoy their long-lasting flower spikes, which provide lasting color for months. In taking care of your bromeliads, it's important to remember that the plant is epiphytic, meaning it grows in branch angles within the jungle. In this particular environment, this plant is able to capture its own rainwater as well as the organic materials that fall into it. So in keeping this plant in your home or office, you want to add water to the plant, not only at its root base, but also within the folds of its leafy rosette. You can add enough water that the water cascades down slowly into the root system of the plant and it keeps the plant watered very nicely for many weeks. Provide indirect light for this plant, such as an eastern exposure or filtered southern or western exposures. Bromeliads love to live outdoors during the summer. Just make sure that they're not in intense sunlight, which would burn the leaves. Most bromeliads can take temperatures down to 40 degrees without any signs of harm, so they're safe outdoors in the periods between frosts. Do not use any type of commercial or at-home type of leaf shine on these plants, and there's good cause for that. Whenever you use leaf shines, such as mayonnaise, vegetable oil, or mineral oil-based shines, they can gunk up the stomates of the plant material. The stomates are natural openings in the leaves that allow for exchange of gases, both vapor form of water as well as carbon dioxide and fresh clean air. Although those shines give a nice appearance to the plant, they're really not good for the plant and it's best to just work with the plant and its own natural shine. Many bromeliads, such as the silver vase plant, exhibit a silvery bloom on the leaves. Upon inspection with a microscope, we would see shingle-like structures referred to as trichomes. These appendages help the plant to take in water and nutrients. Leaf shines would just gunk them up. Take care not to use sponges or rags to clean the leaves either, since this action would remove the helpful trichomes. It's really easy to propagate a bromeliad plant from a parent plant. You see, when a parent plant blooms, it goes through its life cycle and then it sends up a smaller plant to the side of the parent, and those are called pups. Here is an example of some pups of Neoregelia, another type of bromeliad. The way to pot these up is really quite simple. All I need to do is to take a pair of pruning shears or scissors and separate a few of the pups from uh, the stems. I'm going to remove some of the foliage that is old from the base of the plant. Mostly this is just here and being done in order to give this plant a better appearance. Next up, I'm going to take and fill a pot with some well-drained soil. This is just a commercial mix, um, a soilless mix found at any garden center or plant department. And I add this into a pot that has drainage holes in the base. I'm going to take the pups and plant them together, in this instance, two at a time. And as you can see, I've wedged them down firmly into the soil. I'm going to add a little bit of extra soil to help to provide some mechanical um, stability to these two pups and gently press them down into place. Finally, I'm going to take and add just a little bit of tap water to these. It's room temperature tap water. And I'm going to water the plants at the base of the rosette Plus, I'm going to add some extra moisture into the soil itself to create a nice, humid environment for these plants to start to send out roots and start well on their way to growing. 
not all bromeliads are exactly the same, and we can have some interesting effects with other types of bromeliads as well. The first thing I wanted to do was to start off with a decorative container such as this vase. I've placed some polished river stones in the base of it to help for drainage because of the fact that it is a closed base type of container. What I'm going to do next is arrange layers of mosses and other materials, including some of the Spanish moss initially, some of the mood moss, which is an item that is native to North America, and then finally, some sheet moss. If these materials are not around you, you can always buy them at flower shops, or you can also use pieces of bark for something like this. This is a great little plant, the Tillandsia ionantha. It thrives on nothing but air and the humidity within the air. Indeed, we can find areas of Florida where this has fallen from the trees and harvest it that way. I'm going to take this little Tillandsia and prepare it for its formal planting by merely misting the plant with some ordinary tap water at room temperature. And you can see it's spring right now, so this plant is in bloom. I'm going to take it and drop it down into the vase, and now I have a really neat little terrarium that provides a wonderful show, again, for a home and office using bromeliads in some of their different forms. I'm Jim Del Prince, and thanks for watching Gardening Through the Seasons.